What's up YouTube, here we go with another unboxing and review video. This time I got the EVGA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti, this is the Ultra Edition by EVGA. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So the price for this one was about $550, after tax about $600 at Micro Center. And talking about it, we can see this is the LHR1, meaning light at hash rate or light hash rate and uh, if you don't know what is light hash rate definitely check out my other video where i explain what is it and is it effect gaming or not uh, some of the other features on this one we can see it has the third gen tensor cores it also supports the pca express gen 4 and we can get microsoft direct x12 ultimate it has the GDDR6 graphics memory and lots of other things. It is VR ready, supports 4K at 120 Hz HDR. It also supports 8K at 60 Hz HDR. Let's go ahead and unbox it and we'll talk about it more. There are some tricks with this graphic card. Uh, stay tuned to know. As you saw the unboxing, this is a great GPU with a nice design, everything about this GPU is perfect and it is also a RTX 3060 Ti FTW Ultra and that is important as uh, this is the best of the other two that is available uh, on EVGA website. On EVGA website we have the X Seed series uh, which is 479 and the boost clock is 1710 MHz and the other FTW one which is the normal one it is $509 and the boost clock is 1710 MHz However, this one is the Ultra Edition at the price of $539. I got it from Micro Center after tax about $570. The boost clock on this one is 1800 MHz. Way more improvement in gaming and also a lot of improvement uh, while you're doing mining on this card. Uh, unfortunately this card is not available online and you have to find it on a store like micro center if you can find one which is out of stock most of the time too almost you cannot find it online on evga website i'm looking at this website for one year and it's out of stock all the time and even uh, you cannot sign up uh, so once it is available they tell you as you can see you cannot do that either 
But moving on, talking about this GPU, uh, the way that you can overclock this GPU is using MSI Afterburner also within the EVGA software too. If you're interested in overclocking this GPU, definitely check out my other video where I show how to overclock this GPU in the EVGA software or in the MSI Afterburner software. Uh, moving on, I want to show the EVGA software. Uh, it is the EVGA Precision X1. The trick with this software is that the first thing you need to have in order for this uh, software to open because once you connect your GPUs to your um, computer and you turn on your Windows uh, and you install this software, it will not open. Why? Because you don't have the driver. And the way that you have to install the driver is to download the NVIDIA control panel and also sign up in an NVIDIA account. If you don't have one, you have to create one. And also install the GeForce experience and sign in to that too. Once you do that, the drivers for this GPU, and it is the RTX 3060 Ti, it is an NVIDIA. Uh, the drivers of NVIDIA have to be installed. After the drivers are installed, you can open the EVGA software, which then it will open without having any problem. Now you may think uh, if you're installing an NVIDIA control panel, then why not controlling this GPU from NVIDIA control panel? Unfortunately, I have to say that you cannot do that because EVGA is like Apple and their program is closed source and they don't allow you to use NVIDIA control panel to control the GPU and you only need the NVIDIA control panel to uh, get the driver for it. Other than that, everything else you have to perform either in EVGA software in, or the MSI Afterburner. As you can see in the EVGA software, we can uh, change the memory clock and we also can change the voltage and power and GPU temperature. We can see the three fans, mine, uh, three of them, fan 1, fan 2 and fan 3, they are, are running at 76% and the gpu temperature is 68 degree right now a little bit too much but i wanted to show how you cannot uh, change this temperature you also can set off the auto and put all of your gpus at a single temperature and uh, however i do not recommend doing that and what i recommend on doing uh, is um, setting the fan curves as you saw, once I toggle off the auto, all of the fans go on 33 and as you can see my fans are decreasing and the GPU temperature is increasing too, which is not good and if you put like your uh, fans on 80% and they're running at that percent all the time, that's not good either. So let's go ahead and put that in auto and press on apply. What you have to do is uh, go to the temperature tuner right here we can see we don't care about that one the most important part is the fan curves and you can choose between custom aggressive quiet or stilt i use custom and i draw my own fan curve which i like because this doesn't have too much noise and keeps my gpu uh, at the correct temperature i click on apply immediately you can see the temperature dropped and we also have the fan curve tuner right here and some other things uh, we can set the temperature color right here so on the LED light on the GPU uh, once the temperature reach a certain level the light can change to that color and you know what is your uh, GPU temperature that way without looking in the app. Uh, some other things that this uh, software has, it's the LED control, as I said, you, I put it on the rainbow, we can put it on the static on, reading, rainbow, color cycle, wave, and lots of the other ones. I always put it on the rainbow or the temperature. We also can see some of the other control, the clock, the graph for it and we can uh, scan for the power meter 
and some of the other things that this app has. As you can see right here, the temperature dropped and I always like to keep the temperature around 65 degree. If you have any question about this, feel free to comment below. Other than this, thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Thank you.